Միչ սենյակային դրների մեծ տեսականի իդրիալ համակարքի խանուծ սրահներում։ Սկսաց 29,900 դրամից։ I have the opportunity to address Miguel Ángel Moratino, Sanda Secretary General, High Representative, the UN Alliance of Civilizations, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation of Spain. Mr. Moratino, thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, thank you to you to invite me to have a conversation with you. Have you been enjoying your short stay in Armenia? Very much. It's my second visit and really have to say that I found a more dynamic, more optimistic, more engaged uh, society. Uh, the organization of the conference is perfect. This uh, initiative to have a relevant dialogue, I think is a very timely initiative. And I'm really, um, you know, happy and privileged for the warm welcome I receive. I'm very happy of the engagement and discussion I had during these two days. We are witnessing a very protracted peace process in the region. On the one hand, we see the willingness of the Armenian authorities to go ahead with the peace treaty and sign it. Prime Minister Pashinyan said it himself today that they are willing to take the step. But on the other hand, we see that Baku sets up new preconditions every time. So what is your message to regional powers? I think, is peace without an alternative? I think uh, we have to encourage both sides and as I said, I really appreciate the constructive speech of Prime Minister today, the Foreign Minister, and I, I am sure that uh, we have a, a peace opportunity. Uh, I uh, am really convinced that both sides are going to achieve that. And the international community and main actors and uh, different organizations like mine, modestly, all of us should convey this message to both sides that is the time now. The time is ripe. The circumstances are ready. And we have not to miss this opportunity. So that is the big message of Yerevan Dialogue. And I think uh, in my modest capacity, I will continue to exert this message. Uh, there has been too many wars. There are still open conflict. There is uh, war in Ukraine, Palestine. Uh, let's have a good success news. Let's have to the world the good news, finally good news that uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia have signed a peace treaty. I think it will be the best gift before COP29 that we have this news and then everybody will be happy because the last decade, unfortunately, in the international arena, we only listen, only witness bad news. Uh, the, you know, this uh, negative uh, recurrent uh, situation of war, of destruction, of suffering. I think enough is enough. I think uh, the good news will be a peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. That would certainly be good news. However, Armenian experts have the concern that Baku keeps up setting forth preconditions every time to sabotage the peace process. What would your message be to the parties involved? I think we involved? have to create a trust and confidence between the two. And I was working off of that. I think we have, of course, is. Uh, long story, a long conflict, a long crisis, and still there are some lack of, uh, you know, understanding or confidence among themselves. But I think our role is to create this uh, trust and encourage them and uh, push them to get a final deal. And that's what we are going to do. I mean, I'm, my mandate, I'm in charge of religious sites, so I'm the one who have to guarantee that Armenian legacy in, in have to be protected and preserved and, and, and guaranteed, so that is what I'm going to do. The Armenian authorities have put on the table the so-called crossroad of peace, which is, is a vision of a system of infrastructure throughout the region. How do you see this implemented and how beneficial is it for the whole region? Well, I'm not a real expert in infrastructure, 
uh, I'm an expert in politics and diplomacy, you know, and I know... Infrastructure that, is part that, of yes, it. Yes, well, yes, but, uh, you know, I know that there are two teams working and the Prime Minister say that there are still ongoing negotiations, you know, and I know that, that uh, both teams are really committed to reach an agreement. So I think we have to leave to them, you know, uh, how to really facilitate a final deal. Because sometimes people with intention will say that is going to be done, that is the way to advance, but we don't know the whole internal debate that they are having. And I, I know by uh, our friend from Azerbaijan that they are having good personal relation with the, both teams. Mm -hmm that they have a very secluded people that are dealing with a lot of discretion and we have to leave to them, you know. Of course, encouraging them to reach, uh, pushing them to have a, a deal. But the technical final proposal have to be part of themselves, you know. And last but not least, Armenia's shift to the EU is a civilizational shift. It's a value system preference. Um, what role does such a shift, a value system base, based shift, play in actual integration into the EU? Well, I think uh, you have, as you mentioned, no? Armenia have a lot of historical uh, heritage that has been part of the uh, European civilization, you know. Uh, so you have all the right to be part of this uh, so-called Western European uh, heritage, you know, because you have influenced that, you know. It's not a way, uh, way, no. You, I mean, the Europeans have influenced Armenia, Armenia has influenced Europe, you know. So I think you have to reinforce the relations with European Union, that's for sure. But in today's world, you have to have good relations with everybody. Uh, we should abandon uh, what have created during history wars and conflict. That is the zone of influence or bipolarity. You are with one against the other. If you are with me, you are against the other. If I have an alliance with you, I'm enemy of you. No. Let's have a country have the right to have good relations with everybody and decide by their own what are the best avenues? So, but of course, others are trying to interfere internally to you to try, no? But I think in today's world, it has been proven that um, countries that have their own, you know, history, legacy, autonomy, can have good relations with everybody. It's for your benefit. I mean, you have a historical link with Russia, you have a historical link with Europeans, use that in your benefit, but defending your own interests by yourself and not by the, the reason of others. No? And without the, creating polarity. Uh, no, no, of course. And, uh, and the same when we say about European Union, European Union, European Union is 27 countries. There is no one country or two countries, no. You have to address to the 27 the 27, no one or two, three, uh, because we are 27. Hmm? So that's also enrich your relationship with this fund. So for that reason, Yerevan Dialogue has been a very timely and very successful initiative because you have invited uh, people from all around the world that show that you have uh, history links, bilateral links, with different partners. And that is the, the today's world. You have to defend your own national interests, but uh, sharing that with others, you know. Thank you so much for this opportunity. That I thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Miguel Ángel Moratinos, Under Secretary General, High Representative of the UN Alliance of Civilizations, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation of Spain, sat down with the first analytical tonight.